Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon to all our 12th Monarchs out there in Monarch Nation on an exciting Signing Day 2017. A uh, tremendous compliment to our assistant coaches and staff. Uh, that saying that it takes a village, it definitely does. We had a lot of really good people at Old Dominion uh, that helped us with this day. Very thankful to them. Uh, the goal now is once you recruit, now you need to develop. You need to develop uh, the players that you bring in. And our philosophy uh, has been and will continue to be, we're not looking for the best players, we're looking for the right players. Let me say that again. We're not looking for the best players, we're looking for the right players. And a question, Ted, I often get asked, Coach, how do you feel about this class? Well, there's some pretty standard answers, so I always say, ask me in two years. Well, let's go back a few years and let's see how we felt about the class, starting with the class of 2014, which is, was our first year playing at FBS. Taylor Heineke's senior year, we went six and six. In that class, we signed 24. 19 of the 24 have played at some point so far in their career, 16 of the 24 have started. Think about this class of 14. Ray Lowry, running back. Nick Clark at center. O'Shane Zimenez, defensive end. Jonathan Duhart, wide receiver. Justice Davila at safety, just to name a few in that class. So that was three years ago. Let's look at two years ago, the class of 2015. 22 of the 26 signed have played so far in their career. 12 of the 26 have started either as true freshmen in 15 or as redshirt freshmen this season in 2016. In 2015, Jeremy Cox running back. Tim Ward, defensive end. Who can forget his first game at Eastern Michigan? Tips a pass to himself at the end to win the game. Tony Barnett, offensive line. Devin Hannon, offensive line. Miles Fox, defensive tackle, just to name a few. So when you think about the success of a class, I could tell you today about every one of these players and what I think they're going to be. Sometimes you need to look back a couple years to see who you are. And the names I mentioned, the number of players that have started from those two classes are a big reason why we were 10 and 3 this past season. You think about the roster this past season, only 14 seniors on a team that went 10 and 3. Six of those players this year that were key players for us were FCS recruits. Two of them, our two starting linebackers, Ricks and Wilson, were walk-ons. David Washington, quarterback who played multiple positions, FCS recruit, Zach Pascal. So you need to develop. You need to develop your players. That's what we'll do with this year's class. For the 2017 signing class, uh, 19 players, two currently here, 17 today that joined us. Uh, positional needs was critical. We're at the point now in our program, now that we have uh, been in the FBS for three years, where we're beginning to balance our classes. So when you look and see three defensive tackles, three offensive linemen, two linebackers, two defensive ends, two tight ends, who would have thought that? Two tight ends, two quarterbacks, a wide receiver, a running back, and a safety. And we're not done. Signing day doesn't signify the end of the 2017 class, but I'm extremely pleased with the balance. Uh, the job the assistant coaches did with the balance, as usual, the most players we have on the roster are from Virginia uh, in recruiting. And now when I speak to balance, let's, look, let's take a quick look at the roster. We currently have 111 on the roster. When you add the numbers that we put in today, we're starting to gain balance. Uh, this is remarkable that I'm even saying this, but this year's senior class will only be 14 players. We're still uh, incredibly young on our roster. Uh, our junior class this year, this was the class uh, of 2015 that I mentioned uh, earlier with those players that are in the class. Our junior class has 28 players in it right now. Sophomores 22, redshirt freshmen 30. Uh, currently 18 freshmen in this class, which we'll add to. So we're starting to get the balance you need to have so that you can recruit and develop, you can redshirt, and your veteran players become your top players. So that's, that's really exciting. That's something that's got me very excited. Some interesting points about 
this class, this is clearly the tallest class that we have ever signed. Out of the 19, 10 of these players are 6'3 or taller in this class. There's only one player in this class that's under six feet. Why is that a big deal? Well, when you're playing the schedule that we're playing and you're starting to play the non-league teams that we're going to start to play, that becomes critical uh, that when you walk out of the tunnel, you look somewhat similar uh, to the other team you're playing. So really pleased with, with that part of the development with the class. In, in terms of the individual players, I'm not going to go through every individual player. Uh, I'll answer questions to specific players that you have, but uh, this is clearly an exciting day. Our staff did a phenomenal job uh, recruiting. We built off the momentum of being 10 and 3 and winning a bowl game, and that helped us in identifying, securing, and I truly believe in holding on to some of the recruits that had been committed to us for a long time. Being 10 and 3 and winning that bowl game really helped us in holding on to those players. And I will happily take questions at this time. Bob, did you have some thought as to how many more you might, <clears throat> excuse me, you might add? There's not a number that I have in my head. It'll be who can bring value um, to the program. Uh, we're still very mindful of some players that are out there as we always do. We look past signing day and see what happened um, with some other players. Um, so we'll keep our eyes and, and ears open, but it, it never stops. It's 24-7, 365. Uh, and if there's, a, if there's another player out there that can bring value to the organization, we're going to recruit them. Bobby, can you talk a little bit about Jordan Foy and mm -hmm. what he brings to the program with, with, with his experience and the fact that he played a year of junior college football? Yeah, Jordan played at, at Fullerton Junior College. He led them to the, uh, the state championship in California, which is a major accomplishment. What was most intriguing to me about Jordan is the fact that he threw 37 touchdowns and only had six interceptions. And when you look at those numbers compared to what David Washington just did, David Washington was 31-5. and five. He was second in the nation, touchdown to interceptions. So uh, a quarterback that values the football um, is, is what's got me most excited about Jordan and his ability not only as a passer but as a runner and the level of competition he played. And Stephen Williams Jr., I mean, big mm -hmm. kid, young kid too, isn't he? Yeah, Stephen, uh, what really caught my attention was Stephen was at a camp we had this past summer and he was a first in line guy all the time. And every drill we did, he was the first guy in line uh, and he was clearly the hardest worker that was there. Um, and Stephen was having an excellent year this year, got set back. Um, with an injury, plays a good level of football. Um, but being a first in line guy, like Jordan Hoy is a guy who values football, Steven does the same. Those are the traits we look for in a quarterback. Is there a particular area with the sign class that you were happy with? All of them. Happy with all the areas. The, uh, the development, the size, quickness uh, in the offensive and defensive line. Uh, the reason we were 10 and 3 this year had more to do with how we performed up front than at uh, any other position collectively. When you looked at our, our offensive line and their development uh, under Chris Malone, our defensive line under Jeff Comissione and their development, so to see the size and athleticism with the six players we currently have in this class. Um, that's important, particularly with the schedule um, we're going to play consistently uh, in future years. Five, five defensive line, was that by design or did it just sort of work out that way? Both. Yeah, we knew this was a, a really important year for us. Uh, and not necessarily because of who graduated, but I just mentioned that junior class has 28 in it. There's, there's a lot of guys that um, will be graduating in a year. So uh, we looked for not only size, but the athleticism. When you look in the athleticism in that group, and most of those guys played both sides of the ball. I mean, Janaz Jordan from Bethel is playing tailback on the other side of the ball, rushing for you know, 500 yards, 13 touchdowns. So the, that speaks to the athleticism of this group uh, and position flexibility. There's some position flexibility, not only with those interior defensive linemen, but with the 
with the edge players. And that's what we're trying to grow to on defense, is the ability to be flexible positionally by game, depending on who we're playing. Are we playing a run-oriented team or a team that spreads it out and passes it? We, we need more flexibility in those positions, and that's what we got with this class. Anything else for Coach? Probably one quick one. Mm -hmm. A lot of power fives and, and some of the your mid major rivals come in and try and flip players at the end. And it seemed like you, you I, I know some of the kids who signed with you, mm -hmm. you know, held off people trying to flip them. It seemed like you avoided a lot of flipping this year. I mean, um, yeah, I, Harry, I was really pleased with the number of kids that um, stuck with their word. Um, a lot of that happens this last week before you get to February 1st. Um, we've talked multiple times about how I feel about the early signing period. Um, I'm confident this is going to pass, and I'm confident what you're going to see this December 2017 is a, a number of these situations will be avoided. Um, but we were dealing with some situations, like everybody else was last couple weeks. I was talking to some of my other um, some of my other friends that are in Conference USA dealing with the, the same situation. Um, but we had a number of situations where players were approached at the end and said, no, you know, I'm, I'm going to Old Dominion. That's, that's my school. That's where I want to be. Uh, and it was, it was rewarding and gratifying um, to see and hear some of the things I heard, not only personally from our players that signed today, but from the assistant coaches talking to the players and their families. Uh, there's still a lot of uh, still a lot of people out there that stick to their word and and do what they say they're going to do. So we, we were uh, able to avoid um, multiple situations in that regard, and that's a good thing. Anything else for coach? Thank you all for coming. Happy signing day to you, 12 Monarchs. We'll see you April 15th at our spring game.